Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another City of Newcastle episode. And uh, since last time, as you can see by the league table, we have lost top spot. It's not ideal. There's actually quite a few teams in the running for top spot at the moment. So we're going to have to be on the top form if we are going to take that place back, make it our own and keep it. Um, yeah, since last time, we obviously played Lowestoft and Kettering in the last episode. Let's have a quick look at how we've got on since then. So, following the Lowestoft and Kettering wins, we had immediate two cup games against Tamworth and Wimborne. Um, lost against Tamworth, um, probably a game we could have won. It was a bit disappointing, really. Um, but, you know, they're in the Vanarama North, so you can't really complain too much about that. Um, and then Wimborne in the other cup, in the Southern League Cup, we did win. Um, and then in the league, we've kind of had a very, very, very average run of form two losses two wins and two draws since we last played in the league um yeah it's just as average as you can get two of each um i'm hoping that we're going to get form back um oh obviously we made it through to the southern league cup third round and lost against Leyston. um here are Leyston, same level as us so it's kind of it's, it's annoying but you can kind of understand why we have lost it um I'm looking at the table, though, and realising that we've not got too many games to go. I reckon past this episode, we'll have two more to go. I think we'll probably... Tell you what, I'll tell you now. We'll go for Rush, Rushel, Rushel and St. Ives, and then we'll either have a triple header or just a, a double header um, for the final game of the season, depending on what the table's looking like. You know, if we can seal it on that game against Coggeshall, then we'll play that game against Coggeshall. If we can't, and it's going to be down to the last two games, we'll wait until then. But yeah, um, it is match day. It's actually time for kickoff. I'm getting pretty good at simulating to the right time. Let's have a look at the team that's going to be facing off in this match. But before we take a look at the team, it's probably best that I show you this. Um, Rio Dyer has left us, which is a massive shame because he was actually our, our best player in that position. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Well, why didn't you just give him a new contract to try and keep make him stay once you figured out that he was um getting offers from elsewhere um if i'm being honest i didn't notice um until i went over to my tactics screen and saw that the right winger position was um empty so <laughs> it just shows how unobservant i am um have we brought in a replacement for dyer no no, we haven't. We're kind of just working with what we've got at the moment. Um, but a replacement could be a possibility, depending on the money. Yeah, let's take a look at the team. So I'm sure, as you saw from this schedule screen, because I've obviously got my tactics, my um, formations down on there, so you probably noticed that we're actually playing a new system, and here it is. It's a boring 4-2-3-1. Yep. So we're going with that, <laughs> and we've also got some new players. Jack James, um, I don't know if he's necessarily new. I think he is a player that I brought in before at the start of the season. Um, just didn't play him right away. He kind of he started filling in uh, left back as an inverted wing back, and he's just been playing really well. So I've I've kept him in there. Um, he's actually been rumored to be getting some call ups to the Maltese national team. I, it's not happened yet. But, but it could do. Um, gambling, I just want to reaffirm, is easily our best defender. probably Possibly even our best player past Miller. Um, he's been very good. Um, and if we take a look here, you can see five goals for a centre-back in a season is very, very good. And a 7.3 average rating so far. I'm just, I just wanted to point out how happy I am with him. Um, past that, though, um, Baxter, Jack Baxter, is a new player that we've brought in. He's actually worth quite a bit of money. I had never actually noticed that. He's worth 115k. So we could be in for some serious money if he chooses to leave. Um, I mean, he's, he's good. He's not... He's not crucial to our team, but he is very good. So if he did leave, I'll just set him to his actual... Um, position and role there um as you can see he's very good um for our level and if we can get a little bit more than that for him then i would absolutely accept that offer this will actually be his debut he is a new player um or did he play in any cup games he hasn't no he has literally just joined it's i one thing that i don't always mention is the fact that i record friday's episode on a wednesday and then i don't play again until the following sunday on what well, until that Sunday. So 
I have to take a while to get used to, not get used to, but get back into what we're doing. So that this is what we're doing. Um, Josh Foster, a player who's really not very happy, who we brought in from Manchester United on a free transfer for quite a bit of money, hasn't made the difference quite yet, but he's in. He's playing on that right side, and this is his chance to get his game time and prove to me that he should be here. As you can see, last five games, uh, 6.58. It's not great. Um, yeah, but we're going with Welsh up front as well, and I've realised I've rambled on a lot about this this lineup. Um, Paul Miller's still here. Oh, actually, I just realised I haven't told you. Paul Miller's actually signed a new contract. He's still wanted by a lot of people, um, as you can see, but now they actually have to pay us for him, so... Yes, let's get into the game, shall we? So I've given players all the faith and they're all looking very motivated. This game against Hearn Bay is not going to be a straightforward one by any means. They are a team that are up there. I believe they're in fifth at the moment. Um, so definitely going to be a difficult one. And I'm looking, Kettering are actually playing Lowestoft. Lowestoft are now down in ninth, but they are a very good team, as we found out in the last episode. Um... Early on, Hearn Bay have got the only two chances of the game, as we're now getting a highlight, starting with the Hearn Bay goalkeeper. Um, it's a ball forward, and I'm not liking how this is starting. Um, hopefully we can win the ball back, and perhaps start a counter-attack. Gamblin wins the header perfectly, and makes it, um, and passes it to Miller. Miller's just ran through, no problem whatsoever. No one's put a tackle in for him, but... The goalkeeper makes a good save, um, keeps it at nil-nil, and we get a corner. The corner goes in, and it's cleared away. Ollie Eyed passes it forward, but Gambling sorts it, no problems whatsoever. Can I just say, I love this shot. I've reversed the camera angle to get the floodlights out of the way, um, and the building in the back just looks so good. I assume that's our training facility, which is a bit mental if it is. I mean, I might be wrong. It might not be. But I'll stop rambling on. Welsh gets a chance. Blocked. And Miller. Passed to Welsh and the goalkeeper. What a save. But this time, it doesn't matter. Paul Miller, I mean. The, um, the drama. The drama. The, the lights aren't really having much of an effect. Because the sun is glaring through my curtains. I don't sit here with my curtains... Shut all day, I can assure you. But for these videos, I've had them shut. Shall we turn? There we go. Let's turn the brightness up of the lights. That's a bit better. Now we can actually see the blue is shining through. As I've talked through every second of that highlight. Not highlight, the replay. Um, If you wanted to see it, you could have. Um, Kettering are now ahead. Cool. Great. So we're still in second. Um, But we're winning the game, which is a bonus. And Paul Miller, easy header. It's 2-0. It's a good throw in, long throw. We love them, as we already know. Um, I'm rambling on again. Paul Miller's got two, and we're 2 0 up. It's a good long throw. It's a. I was going to say it's a good header. It is a good header. It's a simple header. <laughs> so, yeah, 2 0. Happy days. 2 0 at half time is a very good result. Um, I'm not going to tell them that they're capable of better. They are. Of course they are. I mean, if you look at the ratings. You can easily tell that they could be doing better. But I'm going to tell them I'm happy. I want them to feel motivated. I want them to go out there with, well, with motivation and belief that they can do this. And it seems to have worked because we're getting quite a few chances early on in the second half. Um, and the highlight started with Hearn Bay, but Baxter's won it back. It's a good ball forward to Welsh from Baxter. Welsh tries to pass it to Foster, doesn't manage to, but James picks the ball up from the clearance and backs with a beautiful ball to Foster. And that was the chance for Foster to make a name for himself and get his goal, but it's just not to be this time around. But we've got another chance. Um, can we do anything with it though? Welsh. Passes it to Miller for the hat trick, and the keeper spilled it. And Paul Miller is one of our own. The sun is glaring through again, even brighter, and you still can't see the lights. Uh, but <laughs> let's not let's not focus on the lights, shall we? Um, Paul Miller has got his hat trick. Um, it's a really bad <laughs> stop from the keeper, and it just drops into the corner of the goal, into the back of the net, and it's three 0 City of Newcastle. Paul Miller proving. That he is so crucial. I haven't spoke about it. But Paul Miller's actually unhappy. Um, apparently, I promised him I'd improve the squad. 
and uh, I, I didn't. Um, I don't remember promising that, but yeah, it happened, and he's currently unhappy at the club, and I think he wants to leave, but I'm thinking if we can just keep him playing, especially if we get promotion, I think we'll be all right, and we'll manage to we'll manage to keep him at the club. But Hern Bay, as I'm rambling on, um, yeah, have they have scored is what they have done, um, all the drama in this episode so far, and we're only part of the way through the game and first game in and everything is happening with we've, we've had breakdown in contracts with paul below well not breakdown in contracts we've had a new contract um a broken promise we've got the the lights the lights are now back by the way i'm sure you've noticed um what else are we gonna have we've got less than five minutes to go now and kettering a two nil up we've got a long throw from james now cam miller get his head on it he What just happened there? Let's um let's let's go back. Let's go back. We're going to watch that and we're going to pretend that that was normal because watch the goalkeeper. I mean, if this doesn't do it as it appeared when we first saw it, I will be very upset. So James, okay, right, that's very very slow. Uh James throws it in. I might need to speed that up a little bit. And Miller heads it. Okay, it wasn't the keeper. It's fine. I thought the keeper... I mean, the keeper moved very quickly. But it wasn't the keeper that actually stopped that shot. So it's fine. It's no problem. And time has ticked away. And that is the end of this game. And a 3-1 victory for City of Newcastle. Dominant display. Very happy with it. Hat trick for Paul Miller. I really don't want him to leave. I honestly, if I get the chance, I keep thinking if there is one player, I, basically I love when people start at this level, take one player all the way to the Premier League. And I keep thinking, well, if I make it to the Premier League, who would that player be? It has to be Paul Miller. And I just, I really hope I can because I'm going to get to that level that he'll he transfer to. So I just like to keep him with me and not have to drag him um but anyway um it's a 3-1 win kettering also won against lowestoft which means that they stay ahead of us um hell zoen um is um a, a quite close to us three points behind but we have got a game in hand uh the nearest team behind us is cray with um well, six well i say behind them it, with um six points uh difference so hopefully we can keep that gap um yeah let's just go straight into the game against cray and hopefully we can enlarge that difference even more now this i'll be honest guys this this happens a lot um if you follow me on twitter and if you don't links in the description do go and uh, check it out because i do post some things like this i keep getting speculation about different jobs and at the moment, it's, so it started off like League 2 clubs, and I'm thinking, oh, League 2 clubs are wanting me. More recently, I've been getting jobs like this, like Middlesbrough and the Championship. I've also had Newport County, who are strangely in the Championship. I've had Rochdale. I think I had Rotherham at one point. Like, it's mental. Obviously, these clubs are down near the bottom, so they're likely to get relegated to League 1. But still, even a League cl League One club wanting me. I mean, we'll quickly take a look at my profile to see if I'm actually wanted. It says I'm not. So, I mean, I guess maybe the rumours aren't quite as true. But all this speculation about me moving to such a big club, I mean, it's boosting my ego. Let's 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 be honest about that. And I guess with a hat trick, we should probably praise Paul Miller. He was superb in front of goal. And people keep saying to me, well. If he's scoring so many goals, why don't you play him as a striker? And I kind of get what you mean, but I've played him as a striker and he just doesn't perform quite the same. If he can get a hat-trick, even if it's from left wing, then so be it. Uh, I don't want to play him as a striker just for the sake of the goals when he could score the goals as a left winger. Um, yeah, let's get into the next game. Maybe this time round, even though I've already said that. I'm rambling on a lot. This video is going to be fairly lengthy, I think. 
Okay, so it is match day and it's time for the game against Cray. Um, and I'm, I've seen this um, poor link between Gamblin and Ritson and I'm not going to accept that Gamblin's the problem. So Ritson comes out and Barrett comes in. Robinson's also lacking a bit of fitness, I'm noticing. So I think Jack James switches over there and Joe West comes in as the wing back in it, with a, a natural left footer in that area. Um, other than that, I think we're probably going to stick to the same system with the same personnel because it was a very good game uh, that we had last time out. Again, I'm noticing an average rating uh, for Connor Barrett. Is it Connor? I feel like it's Connor. It is Connor Barrett. Um, it's, a, it's a shock that I actually know my players' names. Um, but yeah, his average rating's not too good. So we'll have to hope that he, he does an all right job. And if he doesn't, then maybe Ritson will have to come on for the second half. But yeah, let's get, let's get straight into it. So I'm telling the boys to go out there and carry straight on from the last result. And whilst pumping my fists, telling them that I have faith in them and to go out there and make a difference. Um, yeah, this game, I think I d I'm probably playing down how important it is because they are a team that are right on our tails. And it looks like Kettering aren't playing. So this could give us a potential advantage against Kettering if we manage to get this win. It puts the pressure on them for their game later on. Let's hope we can get three points. Okay, Cray now coming forward with the ball and Gleason's on it for them. Warren plays a little one-two with him, who plays it back to Warren. Ball over the top to Fielding, and Fielding probably should score that. It's a it's a it's a worry um early on, but Miller has the corner, and as always, Gamblin's on the end of it and tries to oh, get it on goal and puts it just over. It's a really good corner, to be fair. Um just couldn't make anything of it. Okay, so it's been a, an exciting first half. Absolutely nothing's happened. Um, we've seen one highlight per team. Uh, we're winning the XG battle, and that's probably the, probably the most excitement that we're going to get from this. I think we're going pumped fists again to try and rile up the players and get them to perform a bit better. The majority of them are motivated by that. Um, I'm noticing Foster, though, is a little unsure, and he's also not performing very well. I don't know if you could see that. Just underneath me, where my mouse is, 6.3. It's not perfect, but we do see a lot of players. I feel like previous FMs, if you've got a player on a 6.3 or a 6.2 or lower, the, the likelihood of them scoring is very slim, whereas I feel like in this year's game, there is, if they are a good player... They will come through as Jack James manages to get himself forward and put away his first goal for City of Newcastle and first goal of the season. Really nice move, to be fair, as I'm rambling on about whether players can score or not. Um, it is actually... Oh, it's not an assist for Foster. It was an assist for Vince. But Foster was involved in the build-up, so hopefully that improves his, um, his rating a little bit. Um, but yeah, 1-0 City of Newcastle. So it didn't really improve his his um his rating, Foster. So we are going to take him off, and Eric is actually going to come on. I'm just making sure that Eric is definitely right-footed. He is. So he's going to come on. He's going to fill that position, hopefully do a bit better than Foster did. Okay, chance for Cray, uh, Cray now, not Crow. Um, and West's on the ball because we've won it back. Ball goes forwards, and Panta manages to win it back for Cray. Uh, Gehring's on it now, plays it back to Panta, who plays a big ball forward to Fielding, but DeBold does really well to win the ball back and plays it back to Barrett. Big ball over the top towards Welsh, but the defender manages to clear it. Another big ball for, forward from Gamblin, and Welsh is on the ball now. It's a good save from the keeper. Definitely should have done better there, and with that in mind, Welsh is going to come off for Cluid Stone. Cluid hasn't really played too much recently. He had a bit of an injury and then past that didn't really play anyway. But we've made that change. Hopefully he can have an impact. And there is a, a highlight almost instantly. But Cray are the ones on it. Ball forward to Fielding. And uh, Theophanus um, is actually easier to say than I thought it was going to be. Managed to equalise for Cray. And I think for the last seven minutes, or less than seven minutes, I should say, is going to be us going a bit more attacking. We've been positive so far, but we're going to push on. We're going to try and get that goal. But with five minutes to go, no longer. 
it's not going to happen. It's a draw. And when you look at the XG there, Cray were very lucky to have that goal. Oh, it's a shame. It's not a horrendous result, but it really gives Kettering a chance to make their advantage even higher. Um, it was just a single point. If they win their game in hand, it will be three points. So it's not ideal, but Cray are a good team. I said it at the start of this game. It was no nowhere near going to be an easy game, and it proved not to be. We definitely should have got a better result, I feel. I feel like we were the better team. Um, I mean, the XG, the quality of the chances that we got proved that, I think. So it's a shame to be coming away with just the one point. But I tell you what, it's better than no points. I am going to tell the boys that they were unlucky. But individuals, I'm actually going to pick out some. I don't usually do this. But Josh Foster and Levi Welsh, I'm going to say um, that they let, they let us down. Um, because they did. I mean, Josh Foster's um, demotivated. But Levi Welsh, I think, understands and feels like that was fair. So that's okay. And as you can see with the league table, we've played an extra game from Kettering. Got a better goal difference. So we are have actually overtaken them. If Kettering are to lose their game in hand, that would be perfect because we keep the advantage at the top. But not only that, the goal difference would look even better as well. Um, but this is going to be the end of the video. I really hope you have enjoyed. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Uh, check out my socials down below, my Twitter and my Twitch. I'm live every Tuesday and Thursday with Football Manager and then a little F1 league racing if um, F1 is something you're interested in on a Saturday. But yeah, uh, I hope you have enjoyed. Until next time, I'll see you later.